How freaky is that? Hey guys, welcome to a rainy cabin start episode. So you can see the nice little opening here. Well, it turns out we're actually not all that far from where the cabin is. And we're gonna be able to do our run for the solar panels. From there, the opening, the clearing, back in and through here, to the cabin. On the last episode, you guys saw us try to climb a 40 foot tree to get our solar panels way, way up in the air. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move a little doghouse here from over here to over there. So we're gonna get the tractor in. Oh man, I thought we were gonna make it. There's always these couple of trees that give us problems. We've got one big tree here in the way, and then we got three little ones, three, four little ones over here that are in the way. We're gonna have to actually cut these down. And then the rest is kind of easy going because it kind of hooks back up to the main trail. And now it's raining. So I'm gonna dodge out of the rain. Hopefully this is gonna clear. We're gonna get those couple of trees out. It'd be nice to get our solar panel up and running today, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen because it's raining and cloudy. We're gonna bring a barbecue out here, which will finally have a little bit of cooking. Where we're at right now in the cabin, we grabbed a stove when we did our demolition of the RV. We salvaged a gas stove. So what I'm hoping we can do is run uh, off of propane and have it in, uh, in this kind of area here. So I have a little kitchenette. So stove, kitchenette, sink, and then uh, we're still working on the trim. And then we'll have a big butcher table here. And then over in the corner, we'll have benches one side, benches the other side. And then we gotta move the stove. The wood stove gotta go back in too. So it's gonna go back in the corner. It's out on the deck right now, but it's raining. That's what you get. Try to get any work done. And it rains. Obviously this is not a new barbecue, but it's what our budget permits. It's actually one that was sitting around here on the property, so I'm hoping it works. We plan on doing lots of kitchen cooks out here, and we're not gonna be making a fire every time, but we will probably make an outdoor cooking area, but it's gonna be a big project. I'm thinking like stones, and we gotta lug them all in and make a nice big, anyway, it's gonna be a pretty big production. I mean, I'm trying to do a whole bunch of things. We're trying to get the Wilderness Living Challenge to work out here, guys. We're trying, we're trying to get Jeremy to come up, and we're gonna hunt and forage and all that good stuff all around the cabin. We need, we need a place to cook, definitely need a place to cook and it's got to be easy because this is going to be like a homesteading edition prepper you know prepper meets homesteader meets survivalist something like that Oh, she goes. We need some rocks in there now. Some stones to spread the heat out. She goes. We got a way to cook. Alrighty guys, that's it. That's job done. Well, one of the jobs done. We got the dog house up here in the opening where the sun is, where it belongs, all ready to go. And then we'll have our gas powered generator down in here, ready to go for heavy loads. We got the wire rigged up. It goes all the way back down to the cabin. We plug it in as necessary. Otherwise we're operating off of solar with the energy system, which will be inside the cabin. So we'll run from here back through the forest to the cabin and we'll have the energy battery inside the cabin where it belongs. It is a quiet source of power as solar is and we won't have to rely on using the gas generator during quiet hours as we should. So for a little bit of perspective, there's the dog house right there. Here's the cabin right here. The power will come in through the back. Got the front deck all swooped off, the barbecue all set, ready to go. We just need some food. And I cleaned up all the balcony over here. We moved 
the uh, stove back inside so it's ready to re be reinstalled we've got all our trim ready to go that's still waiting for us but uh, that's it for Kevin for today he can only help with that I'm gonna go take a uh, walk I'm gonna get my boots on I'm gonna go down the far side of the property I need to measure the dimensions of that platform I'm building which I took you guys on a tour last time you know the tree stand I need to figure out how long they need to be I'm gonna grab my 22 also and uh, just in case I see some crows I've been trying to get a crow for a while that's my goal uh, catch and cook a crow they're a little tricky but they might be up at the field and since I'm headed that way I might as well grab it and I can check my, my trail camera as well so let's go for a little walk I gotta get my boots on and I'll meet you over on the meet you over on the trail got lots of water back here now uh, it's for sure it rained quite a bit the last few days so uh, the swamp's actually a swamp surprised I actually haven't kicked any deer up yet but I think I'm just not on their main travel corridors I saw some crows out in the field when I was out here last I might try to do a set at some point for crows meaning I'll put up some decoys Mojo uh, decoy company sent me some electronic ones and I got like a spinny wing thing and I've got a Fox Pro game caller and that'll uh, do like a bunch of crow sounds and then I bought myself some fixed uh, decoys as well they're just little black crows so I've been doing some research on that part of you know being more well-rounded and doing things that did you guys hear that? I swear that was a buck or a deer snort. Anyway, as I was saying, I've been researching how to hunt crows. So I think I've got a general idea of how to do it. So we'll be trying for that. Here's that stand there. And then my trail camera's there. So you guys are going to be seeing what I got on the trail camera. See if those deer are still hanging around. They've been coming through here over and over again just in this area. But also there's a family of raccoons which will be on the menu too come October fall season. And there have been a family of them coming through probably five, five at a time or so. So this is what the platform looks like now. And we're going to keep the same configuration so but we're going to go up a little bit higher to try to make it a little bit bigger. I don't know if you can make it a whole lot bigger without adding another post. We're going to do our best. Got all sorts of raccoon poops in it. So the idea for this platform here is to go from this tree here over to that tree and then from that tree over to the other one and make a little place to sit. Cantilever it a little bit over on this side, come out a little ways and then cut back in to make the platform a little bit bigger. I thought I heard a crow but I think it's just a raven. Not legal to hunt the raven. Alright, let's go sneak up to the field and see what's out there. That looks like some super 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 fresh coyote scat right there and I actually saw a bunch of tracks, some old tracks in here we could set up on that knoll to do a coyote hunt that's for sure a goal this year too is to get a coyote try last year that's uh no luck we're gonna get it keep trying stuff you get stuff it's my motto break it fix it learn from it just on the corn edge now man i stuck around i don't see any crows but there's a whole flock of turkeys out there i'll sneak around and show you i'll bring the gun anyway just in case I haven't gone all the way around, but I don't think crows, crows and turkeys don't get along anyway. Well, I'm not exactly stealth mode in here. <laughs> all right, that's enough. I gotta get the collar out here. Oh, I don't wanna knock any of the corn down. Oh, ruin the farmer's crop. Oh, let's just go all the way through. Why not? You guys ever walked through a cornfield before? It's like you're on the dry cycle of a car wash. At least the corn looks real hot. Oh, if I had a shotgun. They're all over me now. Oh, right there too. Ah, that's a recon mission, I guess. Because they're actually in the same spot that I figured they'd be in, which is perfect. So, now all I do, are you going to make it easy for me? All right, so now we've got the recon. Same spot two times. That's, that's a pretty positive ID. So what I'll do is, because they're over here in the field, I'll set up in the bottom. Yeah, I know you're here. 
Do you know I'm hunting you? Probably not. <laughs> They're just teasing. So I can set up a set down here in the bottom. Yeah, they're all up in there and over there. So I'll do my set down here, put the collar out, all that, and uh, I should be able to get one. I'll get a chance at one anyway. I figured if they're over here and I call and I just step out of the woods, I can shoot. I should be able to shoot one. That's my goal for this year, to shoot one. I'm at my other tree stand. Uh, it's that black thing up there. I don't know, I took you guys here last time and uh, saw lots of deer signs. So I'm gonna get it prepped up. There's uh, lots of apples on the ground over here, but they're kind of spread out. There's an apple tree here, and then there's an apple tree over there. I'm gonna grab some of the apples and then move them closer to my tree stand. <laughs> I've done this trick before. It only works in the early season, and then they're gonna just be gone. The raccoons eat them all. I've, I've moved them from like one tree all the way over to another tree. You know what happens? The raccoons eat them, and you never see any deer. That's the main reason I want to move the trail camera over here to see what kind of activity I'm gonna get. I'll throw the apples all over here by the trail to encourage them to continue putting their sign here, their scent, and attracting other deer. And then also I'll get to my camera. So let's get that done. Now that I got a big mess of apples over here, in front of the stand, I'll make sure that I can actually shoot to this spot. So I gotta cut some trees down. I don't know why people don't eat these wild apples. They're really good. Really good. That'll work. You see it now? Maybe we should just eat the apples. These are really good apples. I got my Browning camera here. Uh, set to video mode, 1080p, high quality. That's what I want. I want to know what the deer are doing. So I want to know what, the, what they're moving, at what time of day, and then also what they're doing when they get here. So that should be set properly in this little section over here, which is in front of my tree stand, but not too close and not on the trail. So I don't want to spook them off this trail. And I put a lot of apples over here so that I encourage them to get comfortable and put a lot of sign down here. I don't want to leave too much scent out here because the deer figured out and then they stay away. And I don't want them to stay away. I want them to spend a lot of time here. How freaky is that? This is my mojo. They make all kinds of movable decoys. That's obviously a crow. I've got a fixed wing crow here too. Fixed wing, doesn't wing at all. And I got myself a manual call. I've also got the Fox Pro. So I'm all set to do a crow hunt at the back of the cabin here. I've also got myself a new gun. I got lots of toys. Hang on, I'm gonna show you all my toys. So it's got a Browning, Wicked Wing A5, Semi. This is a 12. Last year I was running a 20 for goose and ducks. It went all right, but not great. So we're gonna warm this gun up. So big thanks to Mojo for sending me the crow decoys. They're gonna send us some pigeon decoys. They're gonna send us some duck decoys. So we're gonna be running that over the course of the season. I think they've got a goose teaser. Uh, I'm not sure what that's all about, but it's brand new this year. So looking forward to doing that. I have a uh, clay pigeon shooter. Well, that's the reason Mike Mark's gonna meet him over at the pond. We're gonna get this clay pigeon shooter fired up to see if I can actually hit anything. We got the ASAC camel rocking. So I'm gonna put the ASAC camel on right now and I'm hoping this all comes together. All right, I'm gonna get suited up. I'll meet you guys over at the field. Just got to the corner of the field here and there's a whole mess of turkeys in there. <laughs> see ya. All right guys, we gotta figure out where we're gonna set up. I think I'm just gonna do it in the corner here. And we'll use these trees and we'll just jump out of them and shoot. I think that's our best bet. I apologize for the junky filming here, but I am solo right now. So I think if I go here, I'll be all right. And I can just walk out and shoot. I can hear crows all around me, so that's good. If we do this enough times, we'll figure it out. That's for sure. Two fixed crow decoys. We got our mojo. I'm just going to put them out in the field some random way. And then I'll come back. We'll get that Fox Pro fired up. Put out a crow party. Uh, call There's crows absolutely everywhere. I got to be ready when they come in jump out and shoot them There's 
is a Fox Pro. We'll turn it on. Okay, we're just gonna we'll just stash it in the bushes here. You'll never see it in the bush there. We could have a better spread. We could have a few more, but uh, that's all I got for now. I'll probably get a. If I get into this, I'll get a bit more. Face covering, gun loaded, ear protection on. Don't make fun of me for ear protection. You guys don't want to destroy your ears. You only got one set. We got a camera out in the field. Hopefully you're gonna come in. Hopefully it's gonna work. Wanna eat crow? Would you guys eat crow? Well, all the gear works, that's for sure. Just this gear doesn't work. I'm gonna regroup with Mark over at the pond. I'm gonna let him shoot and see if he's a little quicker on the trigger. He's got more experience with the waterfowl, so I think he should be able to get a crow. They fly slower. They're just higher and they show up from every direction, making it really tricky to hunt. Probably why not too many people do it. Besides, afterwards, you still gotta eat crow. Behind us. Oh, I just peeled off. It saw me. Shoot? No. <laughs> no? I wasn't good enough. <laughs> wow, it's too late now. Oh, why can't geese come in like that? <laughs> 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 so there you go. Well, it's one of those. <laughs> Maybe you should have shot the first or second bird, even though you're hearing 50 others. I was waiting for you to shoot those two. <laughs> I really thought he was going to land right in that tree. So much for the doubt there. Yeah, well, I, I really didn't think they'd come in, especially that quickly. Yeah, two minutes. Within two minutes, if nothing happens. Dude, I think we could have a lot of fun doing this. Two minute sets. Bang, bang. Well, those guys came in pretty quick. Got to be more ready next time. Mark was doubting that they'd come in that fast, but... I had two, two shots right at the start and that was it. All right guys, no crows here. We're gonna do a little bit of skeet, get my target on. Uh, so this is a little cheap champion thrower. It's 40 bucks at sale. And uh, we just got it sunk into the ground here. We'll just get some cheapy, cheapy skeets and we'll throw them in here. Load her up and uh, see if I can hit anything. Oh. Duck. Yeah, when you're going, oh, you first, and you got your second. lead, boom, and then just keep following just because right. you can. Because I'm used to still pump, like pump. Yeah. So yeah, I'd have to drop it to pump. Yeah, yeah. I know that's a habit too, right? Yeah. Oh. That's a nice one. There you go. Now you're on door. Hey, anyway. got it anyway. Felt like I got set on that one. Yep. Oh. Standing on the rope. Oh, you still got her. Oh shit, I almost gave up on him. Yeah, I can't no, see it. Got him right between the trees. Can't see it. Couldn't help myself. I gotta try one more set. We're doing a set just on the soybean edge here. We'll flip that guy on. We got my other two crows over here. I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide over here. I think this is a better spot for me. I did see two crows fly over a while ago but I don't hear any nearby, so it may take them a few minutes to come in. So we're gonna get tucked in over here, and the crow set is over here. Ear protection, GoPro, all that, all ready to go. Get the camera set up, and we're gonna rock it. Let's get a crow on the ground.
There's one coming in now. There's two. One coming in from a distance here. Two coming in. Oh no, they peeled away. One man down. <laughs> I can't get them to come anymore. Save our batteries on this guy here. Get our crow. Landed just over here. There he is. There we go. That's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. Crow hunting. Now we got some food. I wonder if it tastes anything like a chicken. We got that crow all cleaned up. I'm not sure I did the best job in the world, but I just wanted to breast it out, get the, the meat out. I got the legs too. So just back here at the cabin, we're gonna throw it on the barbecue. We're gonna try to wrap it in some bacon. You can't go wrong when you wrap something in bacon. Am I right? Kept the legs pretty much intact. We're just gonna throw those straight on the barbecue. It's always nice to have the claw of the animal you're about to eat. It's as a good reminder of where your food really comes from. Now what I did, obviously I've got a nice piece of uh, breast meat. When I first pulled this out, it was very, very, very tough. What I did was a little bit of charcuterie. So I, miss, I mixed uh, water and salt. And the water and salt mixture is gonna draw that blood out and tenderize it. And um, over the course of a couple of days, change the water, keep it in a cool place, end up with a nice piece of meat. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna flay the breast out um, we're not going to mess around with the bone at all. There's no uh, no need to do any of that. So we're going to end up with a little chicken breast. This is pretty comparable to what you get off of a very small grouse. And we'll do the same thing with the other side. So all I'm doing is cutting down the keel bone here. And then I'm going to scoop the meat out. There's a Y bone at the other side. Then we're going to end up with a nice big chunk of meat here. And we're going to make a several pieces out of each one. We'll aim for maybe four bacon poppers. Bacon, bacon croak poppers. These are nice and tender right now. So we can add a, a few more slits in there just to keep it even more tender and then we'll have to do a little bit less work when we eat it. If you ever had chicken breast, which most of you guys have, they will mix the chicken breast in with salt water as well and that will help tenderize it. We can obviously do the same thing by pounding it but we're not going to. I can feel that this meat is super tender already. And with as with all meats, it's all in the preparation. So we've got our Rodobo spice here. This is available, there'll be a link in the description. And we're gonna add a good amount to it. And from there, we'll just take our bacon, and we'll give it a wrap and roll so that it forms layers inside. And we're gonna have a lot of bacon here, but that's okay. And then we'll just take a toothpick and go right through and skewer it. And then we'll do um, one from the opposite side just to keep it nice and secured. Add two toothpicks and we got ourselves a little crow popper. Beautiful. The legs we're gonna throw on the barbecue just like this to see if they're cute, chewy. I, I'm guessing they're probably gonna be chewy. The legs are always chewy, but maybe the crow actually uses his breast more than its legs, in which case these will just be like mm, moderately chewy. Let's jump over to the barbecue. So this is gonna be my first time eating crow and you're gonna get my honest opinion. I hope it's cooked all the way through because I don't wanna get something like West Nile virus or something like that. So quick check, looks like it's cooked all the way through. 
let's give it a go. The meat's not chewy at all. Taste the bacon, taste the adobo spice. If I fed you this, you probably wouldn't know it was crow. That's really good meat. There's nothing wrong with that. Really good. The leg is gonna be a good test. It's actually tender and not chewy. Like that. Amazing. Well, Kevin just showed up and I think it'd be pretty rude if I ate all the crow on my own. So he's gonna come down here, just haul it up at him. And he's gonna come and have a bite of crow and let you know what it really tastes like. Crow. <laughs> I knew I smelled something. It smelled good. Mickey, crow. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it smells great. You want to take a bite, Don? Sure, I'll take a bite. Yeah, you grab that one there. What part of the crow is this? It's is it breast. wrapped? And yeah. it's wrapped in bacon? Yeah, oh. crow wrapped in bacon. You can really only taste the bacon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's meat wrapped in bacon. Yeah, yeah, it tastes good. It's actually really nice. It's pretty mild. Isn't isn't the crow like a scavenger? No, oh, they eat everything. My point, exactly. Yeah, so does everything else. You're going to have a bite or what? Come on. It's mostly just bacon flavor. I can see feet. Almost like a bacon sausage. Yeah, it's kind of sausage. -y. Yeah. It's actually, you know, if you serve those at like a dinner party, they would go over really well. And then you tell them at the end, you just ate my crow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's good. Very, very mild. You want the other one, Don? No, no, go <laughs> save it for someone else. <laughs> All right, two left for me. I'm gonna eat some real good. The secret to wild game, guys, is charcuterie. Just keep it in a cool space for a couple days. Salt water, mix it out, draw the blood out, repeat. Let it sit, let it marinate. You're going to up with something that's really good. Go out and chase some weird animals and take the pressure off of the ones that we all want to eat. And you might find a good substitute to your diet. If you watched all the video all the way through, right full stop, who knew eating crow would be so good?